Sam has a six girl rotation. Where's Sam at? Are you there? Sam. Okay. Yo. What up, Rich? Yo. What's up, bro? Yeah, it's good to talk to you. So, so um, I'm actually really glad that you, you picked me because I just finished your book. Okay. And listening to your book was actually one of the main reasons that pushed me to realize that I'm wasting a bunch of my time spinning plates. Because even if you're only seeing a bunch of the girls once a month, the time that you have to dedicate to them, it really just sucked up way too much. So I kind of had a realization where the one that I kept coming back to, mm -hmm. the cream that rose to the top, yep. I decided to friend zone all of them. And okay. I'm one week into the LTR. And so basically a big concern that I have is that um, I am a DJ producer that is on the come up. Things are going extremely well. It's not how I make my money. I have a business and that's going insanely well. I'm going to clear seven figures this year, which is how old are you, Sam? 28. Okay. So it's pretty crazy to me. Everything's couldn't be going better. And I had a ton of fun the past two years, basically uh, getting out of my blue pill life, realizing your content after I almost got married, really became the best alpha version of myself. I'm on top of the world right now, but obviously I have a lot of concerns that I'm getting into this LTR where I'm actually at the point um, I'm going to be able to start traveling around the country and the world playing oh, clubs. Is 30. And that's another thing. Okay. Okay. And <laughs> yeah. how long were you dating her? So we were seeing each LTR? other. We were seeing each other since July. Like uh, we were, we were having sex since July, but we were friends because she moved into my old unit and was mm -hmm. getting my mail for about two years now. Mm -hmm. And so literally a good way to describe her, um, I would say she's like a seven. She's like very cute, but not like sexy. Mm -hmm. I put myself at like a nine. Okay. So she is absolutely in love with me and does everything that I need to, to get done. I kind of describe her almost like Pepper Potts, you know, from Iron Man. She's like a really good assistant. You know uh, what I'm Pepper saying? Pepper Potts was um, Gwyneth Paltrow, right? Exactly, exactly, yeah, exactly. So she's just kind of like in the background. She thinks about things, you know, that fills a lot of the gaps that I don't fill as far as like a strategy and, and planning perspective. You know what I'm saying? More of a macro. She's more of a micro kind of thing. Let me ask this so, question, Sam. Who, mm -hmm. who initiated the talk? Like, where do we stand? Me, me. Uh, and, and she actually was kind of, because uh, I realized that, that, that seeing all the girls, again, they were kind of energy vampires sucking up mm -hmm. my time and it was just too much. I, I, I don't need it for my ego anymore. So I'm trying to figure out how to maximize productivity because all the time that I spend not on my business is in music production as I'm trying to grow the brand and, and blow yeah. that up. So, I mean, like you've read my book. So two things you should know right away is don't date women that are older than you. And the second thing is let her initiate the talk. Damn. So, <laughs> so what's the question here? So the question is, is that, um, that basically if I understand all the principles that I have the burden of performance and that I am going to uh, be the one that I, I guess what it is, is that I don't want to give up the ability to have those random one night stands as you know, I'm going out and playing shows and, and doing my thing. Okay. And she kind of understands that. But at the same time, it's like this kind of uh, awkward, I don't want to flaunt it in her face of like, Hey, I'm not actively se seeking out other girlfriends, but you know, when I'm playing in other countries and things like that, mm -hmm. and I have fans and you're not there with me, it's just known as long as I wear like a condom, you know, I'm probably going to be hitting it. So right. it's kind of like a, can this work if that's my state of mind and how should I kind of uh, approach the LTR um, going into it? Well, um, you're approaching it the right way. Um, you're basically telling her like, uh, I'm not monogamous and I'm not going to be monogamous, but, uh, I'm not going to put your health at risk. And, um, the other thing that women don't want is they don't want to be embarrassed. So you don't like, mm. you know, this is something that, um, Esther Perel summarized in one of her books when she was kind of, uh, contrasting North American, uh, culture versus European and in European culture, Women typically look the other way. Like it's almost expected if you're a high value guy that you've got a mistress or, or you've got a side piece. Um, yes. But you're not supposed to bring them to like one of the restaurants that you bring your wife and kids to. You're not supposed to bring them to uh, places where you might embarrass her to yes. friends or family members sort of thing. So, I mean, if you're going about it when you're traveling, doing your DJing, um, you know, you're wrapping it up. 
and 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 she's okay with that, then there's really nothing to talk about. Um, she might she might try to express some concern, you know, at a later date, or she might change her stance on it. Um, but just stay firm on it. I mean, if that's what you want to do, then you've set the tone at the start of the relationship. You're not hiding anything, so just carry on with it. I love it. And then my last question would be, I'm okay with the concept of eventually one day getting married, but I would want to never want to get married where the state has any kind of a say where I can get divorced. It would almost be like a fake marriage. It's like, Hey, we're getting married just for the, you know, but I'm never going to put my name on paper. Mm -hmm. Um, is there, do you have any advice on like actually going through with something like that other than talking to it? Uh, I'm in uh, Georgia. Um, I don't know anybody in Georgia that's that's structured it that way but you'd want to talk to a family lawyer there mm-hmm. um, look for a guy that thinks outside of the box like like don't go for the fuddy-duddy old guy that's you know charging you know a thousand bucks an hour billable um, you know do the conventional you know divorce shit look for a younger guy that understands your lifestyle choice and um, the most important thing really though is I mean if you're going to live in a way that the state views as a marriage and, and you've listened to my book, I have a chapter on mm-hmm. marriage and the title yep. of that chapter is why smart men don't marry. Uh, I'm not saying that you can't uh, or that you shouldn't, but smart men you typically don't marry because it exposes you to unnecessary risk. Exactly. So that being said, the whole point of living with a chick and getting to that position really should be to have kids because she's good mother stock and you want her to raise your children and, have a positive influence and basically take care of stuff so you can go out and chase excellence. Problem with that though is it doesn't matter what you do. Generally speaking, if you live in the West, the state's going to look at it as a marriage at some point anyway. So you're going to have to talk to a family lawyer on that in Georgia and, and see what you can do. The best thing that you could do really is leave a leave a hostile state for a more friendly state. Um, there's, there's friendlier States out there, like Florida, you know, for example, is less hostile towards fathers. Mm -hmm. There's, there's no state or province in the West that I know of that's friendly to fathers, meaning they'll do things to benefit dad. Um, they just do less harmful shit to dad at the exit. Um, so if you have the ability to maneuver and you can live somewhere else, I'd probably suggest moving to a state that's friendlier to fathers. There's. There's a lot more that you can do to that, and I could spend hours on it. I've I've got some notes here on a course that I'm working on on vetting for mother stock because it's one one question that comes up a lot with guys is like, how do I not like how do I have kids and not screw up my life? Right? I'm like the point that you're talking about with marriage is is the point to have kids or is it to marry? Uh, it kind of is like a it's it's to have kids, but at the same time, it's also like a because women don't want to be embarrassed kind of thing. Like I've I've been with this guy for so long. It needs to be outwardly, you know, like the appearance mm-hmm. that, that we're married kind of thing, but I'm not going to budge to allow myself to get divorce raped is kind of where I'm going. Just yeah. Trying to find like a happy middle ground. Yeah. And you're going to find that, 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 that happy middle ground is going to be difficult to land on. And even then it's a moving target because, um, you know, there's this old saying that not all women will destroy a man in family court, but all women can if they want to. Mm. So you want to make sure that you don't give her that opportunity uh, to, to take that tool out of her toolbox. I mean, if she changes her mind one day, like let's say she pops out two kids, you're, you know, you're the world's greatest DJ, you know, mm-hmm. and you're traveling around the world and you're making bucks deluxe and you're playing raves and all this kind of stuff. And, and she's like, fuck it. This guy makes, you know, $10 million last year. You know, he's banging all these hot younger chicks and here I am raising his kids. I'm just going to, I'm just going to take half a shit in the kids too, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you want to, you know, you want to minimize that exposure to risk as much as possible. So um, consider moving to to a place that's less hostile towards fathers, and do whatever you can to lawyer it up so that you've got the risk minimized as much as possible too. Um, awesome. I should have that course later on this year out, and it's going to have a lot of good information in it. So keep an eye out for that. Awesome. Well, I appreciate a lot and uh, good advice about the. Not wanting to be embarrassed thing. And I'm glad you narrated the book. Did a great job. Appreciate Thanks, it. bro. Thank you. No and, and hey, listen, do me a favor. Leave a quick review on Amazon. It helps me out a ton too. Done. I'll do it right now. All right. Peace. Good man, Rich. Appreciate it. Bye.